Hello and welcome to Manav Utsav the online human festival commemorating South Asian Heritage Month hosted by De Montfort University on YouTube Before we start today's event we would like to send out our heartfelt condolences to all the families affected by the current pandemic here in Leicester and elsewhere Hi, I'm Pastor Lorraine Jones from London. I'm super happy that the Human Festival will be celebrated by De Montfort University and celebrate our similarities in Leicester. I've had the pleasure of delivering a peace education workshop at De Montfort University, which is an awesome place filled with inspiration and love. We need this Human Festival now more than ever before through these unprecedented times. It's going to be an awesome event and I'm so happy that it's taking place. My name is Indrajit Madan. I will be narrating today's event. I have been asked to say a few words about my background. So here goes. I spend some of my spare time engrossed in composing shairis in Hindi and Urdu and collaborate with my friends across India. I'm very excited to be asked to take you through the insightful and exciting program we have planned which includes a shari recital from me we have speakers interspersed with wonderful music thought provoking shari and soothing bhajans please post your questions during the session and our contributors will respond to these before the end of this event COS and Manavutsav supports the Together in Hope and we are Leicester campaign started by the Leicester University Vice Chancellor Nishan Kanagarja De Montfort University Vice Chancellor Andy Collop and Leicester City Football Club CEO Susan Wellum So let's start with a discussion hosted by Dr. Indrani Lahiri of the DMU and the founder of COS which will be followed by a song prepared and performed for us by Jayanta Ray from the Sangeet Foundation. Um, we have got Kamla Patni with us and she is going to talk us about cause and what we can expect today. Over to you Kamla. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, difficult circumstances at the moment, but um, yeah, this week during the um, Mana so it's been lovely. So, thank you, thank you. So, w- what is about cause? Like, what is cause? Well, Can cause. You tell us a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Cause, cause, cause stands for celebrate our similarities, as you can probably see behind me. Yeah. Um, so, essentially, cause is about recognizing our humanity. So, and our similarities in the way that we do leisure, you know, the way that we do music, poetry, art, food, you know, every culture has all of those that makes them, um, you know, grounded, as it were, as an individual. Um, and, you know, that, that we are all in it together. I mean, you know, certainly at this point in time, um you know we we're recognizing our similarities so much but when it comes to our essential priorities we're also in it together we always have been throughout time um in terms of air water food climate change you know personal peace as opposed to political peace and mental health so we call mental health mental wealth you know in terms of be, having that um that resilience which which in a way manabutsov is talking about the, re- the resilience within the south asian community so it's quite relevant um so essentially that's what causes in a nutshell yeah so can people like us can can we all um join and or how how are you planning to make this uh, impact in the society you know in that way mm-hmm. so can yeah. people join 
Yeah, so we, we already have a small team of uh, about 10 um, trustees and um, advisors. We do have a wider set of people who've offered to advise as well. So we have advisors from all the three universities in Leicester, which is really good. Um, but w when we are taking events and um, actions, we, we're looking for volunteers to, who, who can relate to what, we, what our aims are. So what we're asking is for people to find out more about what causes. And if you send us an email, we will send you our, our outline of the project. You decide whether you want to engage with us, and we would love for you to engage with us, and uh, find out how, in what areas you're interested. Um, so, you know, it could be about how do you, um, you know, create a group of people that looks particularly at climate change. Um, at the moment, all of our advisors generally um, are very keen on on a project that that is one of our key priorities because we think we can run with that and get results um, in relation to personal peace. So it's a peace education um, course that is you know having quite an impact around the world. So we're looking at that to start off with, but then our second priority, which we're starting off, is climate change. So people would be able to get involved, and with Leicester being such a diverse city, we think we can offer something that can that, that everyone can relate to. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And I think um, there is a huge potential. And those of you who want to join, of course, you know, there is a there is an email that you can see at the bottom of this video. So um, therefore, yeah, write to Homelove to for if you, if you want to join it. And I think there is a project there as well for the students, you know, and and they can they can possibly participate in your project in a in a live way what do you think yes absolutely yeah. I mean, we're looking for for um you know students to to take the lead in fact in some areas uh, because they are the future um you know uh, yeah I think we can uh, provide some of the the our life um lived experiences but it's the young people that that can make the, the changes in the world Fantastic. So, um, in a nutshell, can you tell us what the audience can expect today from this event? Don't go into much details, though. Okay. Well, today we've got, um, with it being South Asian Heritage Month, we've got um, a lot of things that have been happening in Leicester, actually, um, during COVID, where, you know, we found out about, um, you know, how people have been helping each other, um, all the different areas of um, uh, the South Asian um sort of culture so we've got you know things around um vastu shastras well all the different sh shastras ayurveda um all of those lovely things that that have been going on on zoom uh, you know meetings which has been absolutely fantastic uh we've got also got areas about uh, talking around subjects that south asians generally don't talk around and we've got some statistics and that kind of thing and we hope that, you know, we will start a conversation uh, or at least enable a conversation to start. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've got music, we've got shires, you know, we've got lots of stuff. So Fantastic. Looking forward to it. So um, let's start the event then today. And thank you very much for joining us. And thank you. I, would, I would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to celebrate our similarities to collaborate with the DMU. We really appreciate Pleasure. it. Absolutely. We love to work with you again together. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. सरत को उड़ने दो हवाओं से मिलने दो अंधेरा है जहाँ में तो याद में जलने दो सरत को उड़ने दो
माना के बदला सा आलम ये शहर का है सुनी है गली दिल की अपनों से भी दूरी है तुमसे गले मिलने खुशियों को तो आनी है रत को उड़ने तो हौसला हो इरादे हो फिर क्या है जो मुश्किल हो इंसान की हकीकत वो हारे नहीं हिम्मत वो हौसला हो इरादे हो फिर क्या है जो मुश्किल हो इंसान की हकीकत वो हारे नहीं हिम्मत वो फिर वक्त ये बदलेगा उम्मीद ये कायम हो उस बार तो सवेरा है रात तो टलने को हसरत को उड़ने दो हवाओं से मिलने दो What an interesting insight into COS and amazing song from Jenta capturing the current situation we humans are facing all over the world you can get further details for both at the end of the event i am now delighted to share an excerpt of the peace education program with the permission from mr paul bloomfield from the prem rawat foundation which will be followed by two short films about the positive impact pep is having in india viewers from india will also have the opportunity to connect with punam sherawat who is doing some amazing work there everyone can benefit from the peace education program happiness has nothing to do with what you have and don't have Happiness is when you are in touch with yourself. Premier Watt finds a way to explain to us, you don't have to feel what's going on up here, you have to feel what's going on in here. Do you know you? I have done the peace education program and I've gained knowledge about my inner self. And it's amazing to know who you are. Peace education is teaching us how to understand ourselves. The content is important, but the reflections, in my view, are equally important. Prem Rawat actually encourages all of us to see the gifts that we have and to acknowledge everything that is within us. When I say peace, I mean the peace that exists in the heart of every human being. The possibility is about you being content and you being in that peace. There's something about the peace education program that connects you to something deeper and also provides accountability and choice and responsibility for your own life and I think it's really empowering.
मानव उत्सव हाय आई एम पूनम शरावत एंड आई एम आई हैव अ डिस्टिंक्ट ऑनर टू बी वॉलेंटियर इन द प्रेम रावत फाउंडेशन अ यूएस बेस्ड चैरिटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच एडवांसेस डिग्निटी पीस एंड प्रॉस्पैरिटी बाय एड्रेसिंग फंडामेंटल ह्यूमन नीड्स सिंस लास्ट फाइव ईयर्स आई एम फेसिलिटेटिंग पीस एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम इन इंडिया Since last 5 years it has been gratifying to see so many people impacted positively. Peace education program has proven effective in a variety of settings like education, military, paramilitary, police, uh, correctional facilities etc. I want you to know what I know about this remarkable program. Peace education program is awakening the possibility of uh, inner strength and personal peace. It is fair to say that it has huge success in India. Since last 5 years more than 15000 people have enrolled in pep workshops. Peace education program in education average 2000 students uh, from uh, 100 universities and uh, colleges enrolled for the pep workshops. Lot of enthusiasm for peace among youth. Some expressed that the modern world is becoming smaller, more integrated, technological advanced, but they also worried that the world is becoming more fragmented and less peaceful. Peace education program videos focuses on preciousness of life, the gift of breath, and the possibility of fulfilling the thirst for peace. Pep is unique in many ways. It helps people. think about themselves we are very keen to know to others but ourselves never crosses our mind changes is in students notified more positive social behavior power to choose wisely less emotional distress improved attitude towards self and others this education program has proven a remarkable change in the state police organizations thousands of uh, police personnel attended the program first uh, when they are coming to sessions they said that our life is so stressed so busy and this is not possible at all but once the session is started it feels so smooth so great and they uh, they just just enjoy it and uh, they are public police public relations improved uh, they are uh, it, it helping uh, coping the daily routine stress and uh, they feel happy their happiness is uh, all the time on your face you can see so this is the advantage this is the outcome of the program in police organizations few expressions The average life span of a human being is said to be 70 years. One must be thinking that 70 years is a very long period. Um is it plenty of time but uh, in calculation in days is of only 25,500 days. After deducting the uh, past days I realize that the life is very short and precious as well. Every second is forcing you to the end. So why to live in a state where you bound yourself with stress, hate, hatred, depression, etc. We can explore love, peace, joy, companionship in our heart. More than 150 uh, programs have been organized in the para organizations in India as a stress management and self awareness program for the soldiers and the officers. feedback from the commandant training uh, border security force 10 sessions of peace education program of tprf were found to be very educative and successful in inciting the introspection process in participants for search of fundamental human need that is peace and joy pep in military indian air force medical officer officers and indian naval officers attended peace education program they said that this program should be inculcated in our military trainings the subject of peace education program as such was considered alien in um, armed forces however this training proved peace education can be effective towards psychological understanding in efficient performance of duty this is the statement from the commander command QRT training center southern naval command indian naval navy 
So these were the few expressions and few news uh, from India I would like to share with you all. And I am very, very thankful to Kamla, founder of CUS, to give me an opportunity to present these things to uh, Manavutsa Festival. I wish uh, great success to CUS in their endeavors and hope to see many, many programs, peace education programs across all UK. I hope a very good humanity and peace and love should spread all over the UK. Thank you. Thank you so much. We all know that in 60s and 70s, many young people from the West searched for peace in the East. Here is an inspiring story of Leicester-based PEP facilitator Peter Lee's journey to find peace and how it has stood the test of time for Peter. Thank you, Peter, for come, uh, talking to me today. Well, you're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. We're celebrating um, Manavutsav, which is an online festival commemorating the uh, South Asian Heritage Month. So it's... Um, it's really interesting to see about, uh, I want to hear about your journey to India. Um, so could you tell me a little bit about your journey, what happened and what you learned and where you're at now? Yeah, well, well in the late 60s, I mean, many of you may know, you know, from history that the search for peace was 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 what was happening at the time. There was a great deal of disquiet in society. And I was one of those people who was really looking for something more than 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 what what this world could offer me. Um, and there was an emptiness inside of me. And the trend in those days was, well, go east, young man, and you will find the peace that you are looking for. Uh, little did I realize that actually peace lies within me and I didn't have to move anywhere. But we decided, yes, we were going to go to India. So a group of us got together and we made this long and at times arduous seven week journey to get to India. Um, but it was a wonderful journey because we had this real strong motivation to, to get there and to, to try and learn something about ourselves. And that's when I came into contact with um, Prem Rawat, who at the time was, was only 13 years old. Um, but he had a wisdom about him, and um, he taught me how um, I could find that peace inside of myself. And that really motivated me to get back to England and to start to help to get this message out there that yes, peace is possible, that, that it is possible to live this life well, to, to have, a, to, to feel good in, inside yourself. So mm. that for me was the start of, uh, start of my whole journey with peace. Wow. So, so I mean, I, I understand that what you learned there now has developed into a peace education course that people can, you know, Yes, indeed. What I, what I learned then is the same as what I learn every day when I make that effort to feel that peace inside of myself. And, and, and every day is an ongoing learning process. And the Peace Education Program is a wonderful tool which, which has enriched my life and enabled me to learn more about myself but which has been such an incredible benefit for all of those people who have been through it. And um, people in, in educational institutes, um, veterans groups, prisons, hospices, um, um, oh, lots of other different places. The, 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 there's a website called the Prem Rawat Foundation uh, website which, which has many examples and little sample videos of the peace education program and even how you can start one of your own if, if you're so inclined. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots and lots of information as I said uh, on there. Now I personally have been involved in facilitating um, some peace education programs um, in a prison 
um, and in uh, a local community uh, setting. And it doesn't matter whether you're in prison or whether you're, you're, you're free um, out in the community, you still need peace. And everybody's reaction to this program is the same. Oh, how, how wonderful this is. It's put me in touch with something inside of me. I realize now that I do have hope in my life. Um, it, it's very clear to me now um, um, that what I've done in the past has been my fault, not anybody else's. Um, that from a prisoner. Um, so many, many examples. Um, and these can be found on the, the Penrod Foundation uh, website. There is also uh, um, an app called Timeless Today um, where you can listen to um, uh, lots of videos by Prem Rawat, but in particular, there's, there's um, a course called PEAK, P-E-A-K, which um, is Peace Education and Knowledge. So it's an ongoing online version of the Peace Education Program. And there's also the possibility that um, there will be an online interactive version of the Peace Education Programme coming out fairly soon. So these are exciting times and, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming more and more and more obvious, I think, to many, many people that we really need peace. I mean, I know, and we're right in the middle of uh, the COVID pandemic and uh, people are so in need of um, something to, to have hope about. Um, and certainly the um, online um, interactive version may actually be very um, interesting. I quite, I'm really looking forward to that myself. <clears throat> and we want to make it available to people locally here in Leicester or anywhere, in fact. So if, uh, you know, I mean, just as a side, we will be providing information later on, but uh, it would be good if um, people wanted to get in touch, we can develop a list, but also provide information for people to connect up directly if they so wish. But what we are intending to do in the future is to provide it, the uh, peace education, which is already available in something like 30 languages. With Leicester being the most diverse city, we think, that that would be a, a really good, um, you know, project for Celebrate Our Similarities to start with. Um, I mean, although Celebrate Our Similarities, we'll be looking at food, air, water, and all kinds of things, climate change. I, we think that this is a perfect uh, good practice example to start from and then develop other ideas for the local community to be more aware of how, how they impact the world as well as impact themselves so but thank you ever so much peter that was a really really interesting um you know story uh, which uh, i certainly value a lot um and is very relevant for what we are doing right now as well so thank you very much peter well thank you for inviting me as well a pleasure thank you many shastras and vedic knowledge is enjoyed and shared by south asia such as uh, Ayurveda, Vastu, Yoga, Meditation, and the more recent Mindfulness. We are delighted to bring you a medley of some locally based here in Leicester with an insight into how they have adapted recently during the lockdown due to COVID-19, followed by a shairi from Indijit which is called Wo Jamannaraha. Hi everyone, uh, warm welcome to uh, Mana Utsav and uh, many thanks to the organizer for giving me this opportunity to share something which is very beautiful and very appropriate for Mana Utsav. Um, about myself, I'm Deepa Preta. Um, Vastu consultant and I've been practicing Vastu Shastra for the last 20 years. I also have a background in um, architecture. I studied architecture and engineering and professionally um, I'm in uh, project management and cybersecurity field. So 
Today, I'm collaborating with Celebrate Our Similarities and Mana Utsav Festival hosted by the De Montfort University. And as you know, uh, July 2020, this month is particularly is a South Asian Heritage Month. So I'm going to speak something which is uh, from South Asia, very, very uh, beneficial, and it's a super science. So I'm happy to share it with you today, and it's called Vastu Shastra. So do you know what Vastu Shastra is? And um, hmm, anyone? You must have heard this name, um, especially people with South Asian background. So essentially, this is a science of um, building design or build environment. And it's been practiced, uh, especially in India for millennia. Initially, it was used to design temples and uh, subsequently then start using in the palaces and building the residential houses and offices nowadays as well. So Vas, that's the key word in Vastu Shastra that means to dwell and Vastu means the, uh, the dwelling and Shastra means the science. So Vastu Shastra is literally a science of dwelling. And I would say it's a super science. It's a super science of dwelling because it's not just looking into uh, the, the, the built environment, the space around you. It also looks into how you interact with it. So interrelationship between you and your built environment, which is the essence of modern times. So Vastu Shastra, it was... Uh, came from um, Yoga Shastra, right? So it takes the philosophy of Yoga Shastra, which is um, based on a very beautiful Sanskrit word, which called Yat Pinde Tad Brahmande. So whatever is uh, inside you is a reflection of outside world, right? So essentially saying is you, as a person, as an individual, is connected with the cosmos, it's connected with the universe, it's connected with your environment. And we know it, right? Especially at this time, right? These challenging times, we have seen it. The connection, how uh, the world is connected, how we depend on our environment. And you must have felt is the days uh, when you don't get to out, right? Or feel uh, the nature in your house, how you feel it, right? So it's, it's a very beautiful science and it brings and um, how you can sort of really, really, really in tune, um, in tune with your nature, right? So how to build an eco-friendly uh, dwelling. And it's not just about um, in the sense of uh, uh, using certain materials, but it goes much, much deeper than that, right? So it looks into the direction, it's looking into the energetic aspect of it. And I know, right, some of you are studying um, maybe architecture at TMU and uh, so um, you believe right probably we as an architect have a very um, sort of focus on form and the functionality and I think when I started architect architecture that's how I started as well but when I came to know about this beautiful science of Vastu Shastra I realized right how complementary it is to the modern uh, architecture or contemporary architecture and that's when I got interested into it and started practicing more and more, right? And uh, that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years. And it's 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 not the science, as I said, right? It's, it's a super science, but not just the aspect of science. It's a super in the nature because in those days, they used to even consider the art aspect of it. If there was no differentiation between art and science. And it's very multidisciplinary. It's, it's uh, modular. It can be applied anywhere, be it in your home, be it uh, in your office. And it is so uh, relevant to what we are going through right now. So um, again, many thanks to uh, Mana Utsav, DMU and Cause for inviting me to speak about Vastu Shastra. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks very much for that. And looking forward to speak to you or see you again. Thank you. Hello, Vashi. 
Sudesh Krishna, a traditional Ayurvedic practitioner from the hub of Ayurveda, Kerala. I am working for the last four years in Govardhan Ayurveda, a part of Govardhan Eco Village, which is an initiation of ISKCON. Today I am going to speak about the basic things of Ayurveda the importance of Ayurveda in a human life. So what is Ayurveda? Ayurveda is the science of life. It is the holistic form of health practice that really honors an individual, that really honors the body, mind and spirit. It encompasses diet, lifestyle, herbs, and even spirituality is explained in Ayurveda. So, one regimen for one individual will not be the same for another individual. That's why we say it truly honors an individual. Ayurveda is actually originated from ancient India and all the scriptures are written in the language of Sanskrit. If you read the books, if you read the books of Ayurveda, the original manuscripts, you can understand that it will help you to understand the value, the value of life. It will help you to live life in the most harmonious way by accepting, by understanding the nature. Ayurveda is actually a life science. Ayurveda is actually a life science. It is really accessible because its foundation is health. Ayurveda is the, the food that you eat. Ayurveda is the in your every action. In each and every moment of this universe, Ayurveda is the. So it is how you arrange every single moment, every single thing that is part of your life. And it is the simplest way to access by our diet, by our lifestyle, for the supreme 
salvation. Ayurveda is in each and everything that we see around us. And we are very fortunate that this science is preserved by our ancestors and it is transferred to us from one generation to another generation even though they were struggling for that. And I am very happy that it is expanding globally day by day. We should understand, we should know this Ayurvedic science in this electronic era, in this robotic era, this divine science is dominating over other sciences. So what we should know, what we should understand from this? Nothing with the color, nothing with your sex, nothing with your age, whether you are an African, American, you are from West, East, whatever may be. The main thing, we all are human beings. So this divine science, you can use. Use this path to back to home. We have to choose the path to back to home. Live along with this Ayurvedic science. Live along with nature, not against the nature. Follow Ayurveda the natural healing science. Thank you. Hello everyone. So a very warm welcome to all of our guests here today. Um, and, and of course, what we are talking about today is mindfulness. And I'm sure that the audience who are listening to it, they're quite conscious of the fact that uh, what's been happening in the last couple of uh, months have created some sort of disturbances, you know, um, and staying indoor and this and that. So people have been looking um, for peace. I mean, peace in the sense of internal peace. So people have been looking for it and they have downloaded so many apps. So I think we are trying to build in a meaningful conversation today by inviting Mika, who has got, um, you know, who is a specialist, of course, and, and she has got, uh, she's a mindfulness-based cognitive therapist uh, based in Leamington Spa. And she's got four years of experience, uh, of course, in the cognitive field, but she's got about 15 years of uh, experience as a therapist, which means that she also has worked in the fields of acupuncture and other areas like domestic violence, etc. You know, So we have got someone here with us today who can actually talk us through and give us an un un understanding of what we can do when we are in such a kind of, um, you know, you know, trying to trying to find ways. So very welcome, Mita. Uh, would you like to take us through? So sure. what, what what is it that you do, and what is the mindfulness thing that you know, uh, and what's his connection with productivity? Sure. So, hi, thank you for having me on. Um, so I've been teaching mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, which is an eight-week course, uh, which is also recommended by the National Institute of Clinical Excellence. So it's a clinical intervention for preventing uh, depression in people who've had two or more episodes, but it's also great for lifting mood and stress and anxiety. So it's good for anybody who wants to build their mental resilience. Um, so I teach this program over eight weeks. So it combines the mindfulness sort of meditations uh, alongside cognitive behavioral therapy. So what it does is it gives the individual a real insight and self-awareness of the relationship between their thoughts and their feelings and their body sensations, but also um, the ability to step back and take more control. So as we're going through this time of uncertainty, you know, a lot of people will probably be feeling fearful and anxious about 
what's ahead and, you know, not knowing how to deal or cope with the difficult feelings. You know, there's things like grief, loss, anger. There's so much going on right now. So this type of therapy gives you the tools to feel more in control and find, like you say, a, a sense of calm or that place of stillness. Um, and in terms of the productivity, what mindfulness means is it's the, the definition for it is, is mindfulness is about paying attention on purpose in the present moment without judgment. So what that means is whatever tasks that you're doing, you're paying your full awareness and attention to that. So you become aware of your thoughts and your feelings, but you're engaging with that one task in hand. So say you're listening to somebody, often we, we, you know, somebody tells us their name and we forget. So that's an example of mindlessness. So if we're fully present and fully engaged, we're more able to focus um, and be with that task. And that's how that improves your productivity. So a lot of organizations like Google, a lot of hospitals, Apple, lot of firms and workplaces use mindfulness because it's been shown scientifically to improve your productivity, your performance, your clarity, because it gives you that uh, clarity and awareness of what you're thinking and the ability to step back from unhelpful thoughts and patterns that may be stopping you from being productive or making you procrastinate or or just dwell on negative feelings that are not really serving you. Muted. Yeah, sorry, I was muted there. Okay. Yeah, so I think we have got a team here as well, isn't it? So you have got, you you are actually running that um, um, course. And then we have got um, three of your students here who have been actually doing that and, and participating in it. So I would like to bring them in one by one just to, just to get a feeling of how uh, they felt before the course and after the course and, and uh, what changes they have noticed. So um, can I ask um, Kamla Patne to go first and um, let us know about how your experiences, please. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, I, I came into um, doing mindfulness and many other things in the last few months due, due to COVID. And I've learned so much about so many different things. And when I chose to do mindfulness, I felt I wanted to check it out from what I've been used to doing for 40 odd years. And I wanted to see the relationship between what what that is and what, what mindfulness is. And um, I actually feel very... Um, enthused about what I learned. Uh, it was really good because it's taught me something about what I see as, as, as internal core uh, connection uh, in terms of consciousness and mindfulness I've found, and I, I mean, I might be wrong, but this is my experience, but uh, with mindfulness, I've found that it's about um, your consciousness from skin outwards. And it was quite a profound experience for me in that sense. So, yeah, it's something I want to continue to uh, look into. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, on that note, can I bring in Sue as well? Um, would you like to take us through your experience there, Sue? Yeah, yes, thanks. I, I really have enjoyed this course. Um, it's really good to do an eight-week course to be taken through the processes and uh, practice. Somebody said to me that the thing that got them through depression was learning the three minute breathing technique and that's one of the main uh, techniques and tools which you know is a really quick tool to use it really helps to bring us back into the present so and that's one of the many and yeah I mean I've found it really I feel much more conscious and aware and um, I've got more tools to to help me cope and and it's been lovely doing it in a group and so yeah it's brilliant thank you Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mainak, your point. Can you can you share your um, experience? Thank you. Thank you, Indrani. <clears throat> well, actually, I was fortunate to get two sessions from Mita before we actually started the course. So I, I, I had opportunity to go it twice before I actually started the course. And it was a good decision I made 
the eight weeks uh, seem to be a long period because you have to do a lot of practice in that. But this is, as as Meta explained uh, during the course, that it, this is just the beginning. Once you are into it, it, it would be a very beautiful journey. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I, I've learned many things and I've, I've prepared my toolkit. So whenever needed, I can just open the toolkit, use the tools as and when needed and take it from there. But it has basically helped me to ease the way I'm living. I was living a very stressful life. I still am. But this is a process which will help me to reduce the stress level. So thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I think, I mean, yeah, I mean, in a way, I think our audiences can get in touch as well. So I think the question here is um, for Mita, really, just to conclude and, and um, give our audience a little bit understanding around how um, they can get the support or even, um, you know, if there are some, some tools that they can um, go and download, maybe in application forms, or, or how do you suggest our audience to get connected with you and... Sure. I mean, I, I have a website, so you can visit my website, which is www.metamystery.co.uk, or I'm quite active on Twitter where I post updates most days on mindfulness reminders. So that's at Meta Mystery. And on my website, I also have a 28-day program. So it's a shortened, condensed version of the eight-week course that everybody else has been on. Um, and I'm happy to um, point people in the direction. If you want to email me from my website, there's a whole load of contact details. There's information on there as well. So I'm always happy to help people and point them in the right direction if they have any questions. So uh, that's fantastic. Please. Yeah, thank you very much. And I think, you know, you. you receive lots of emails after this. I think, yes, I mean, definitely something that we look forward to. Um, and, and I think this is going to be really important when it comes to the COVID, um, you know, post-COVID recovery phase yes. that we are entering at the moment. You know. So thank you thank very you. much again. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to this session of Heartfulness and uh, here we have got in our studio um, Kamla and Sue and Simon. Now I'm not going to introduce any of them because Kamla has been doing some wonderful work with these people and it has been a fantastic journey so far and um, uh, of course uh, Kamla Patni is going to introduce them and Kamla is also our DMU alumni. So over to you Kamla. Take us through that journey that you have been through as well. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm an alumni for a few years, but recently I've been, um, as we've covered in some of the other sessions, uh, mindfulness, Vastu Shastra, um, Ayurveda, uh, many, many things. And we've got little clips of them, uh, yoga, and heartfulness is one of them that I came across uh, when you introduced me to it, actually, the other month. So without further ado, I'd just like to introduce Simon. Simon is the instructor there, and Sue is a Good student. Evening. So hi, Simon. So, Hello. so if Simon, could you explain to us in, in a few words what heartfulness is, if it's possible? <laughs> I'll try and do it in a few words. Um, heartfulness is a, a, a system of meditation that um, has evolved from Raja Yoga, that was the original practice, which would morphed into what we now call heartfulness. It's different to a lot of other meditation practices in as much as that we use something that we call transmission or pranahuti. Um, if you Google pranahuti, you will see it's uh, a, a beautiful energy sort of that's offered to um, meditators. Um, what we do is we meet twice a week currently in Leicester, in this area itself. Um, we have a meditation session for about an hour on a Sunday and 30 or 40 minutes on a, on a Friday. Uh, the way the practice works is it's heart-based. So we meditate on the heart, which is the seat of the soul. This is where it all stems from. Um, the transmission 
works on the heart. And lots of magical things happen, but to try and explain it all in a few minutes would be difficult. But the best way you can do is to try it for yourselves. Let the transmission, feel the transmission, become the experiment. Uh, Sue will probably tell you how she has experienced it for herself as well and, and give you some idea of maybe what she found in the first few sittings. Uh, okay. Yeah, hi. Uh, I, um, I came across the meditation centre and um, joined, and I have to say it probably has been one of the most profound experiences I've had. And I did have some real breakthroughs doing the um, meditation. One, I could sit for the longest I've ever sat doing meditation. And I, it, seemingly I didn't understand why particularly because I was new to it. But but the the kind of con the, the support of everyone helps you to stay with it and do the practice. And I'm really glad I discovered it in before lockdown. You know, obviously, hopefully that will change. It, we miss not meeting because I do think the meeting's important. But it does give you it's given me much more confidence in my ability to do meditation and and build from that and I do can see much more will grow from it it's it's you know I've got more to develop so yeah it's been really really lovely so Simon you said a little bit of history about it so so um how how uh, how many centers do you have in the in this country in the UK do you know I mean roughly oh there was probably somewhere in the region of about now probably a hundred. Mm -hmm. The whole of the UK and Ireland. If people want to discover or to give it a try, mm -hmm. um, you can go on the website, which is artfulnessuk.org. Um, the scroll down, so you can find out where the, the nearest centre to yourselves is. Or um, if you're if you're Leicester based, we're in Blady, mm -hmm. um, and I'm happy to give you an email address. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to contact, or you, know, you can you, you can contact us at um, Simon at artfulness.co.uk. That would get you um, any information. Then from there on, we can just send it to you. It's no problem. That's great. You could also put your details in the chat on the live event, so yeah. um, people can write that down as well. So thank you for that. Um, it's not .co.uk, by the way. It's heartfulness.com. Uh, so, sorry about that. There's good reason to write it in the chat then. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's really good. That in, an, in, in sort of a very, very quick summary, um, I think it does explain what is available here in Leicester. And I, I mean, you know, what I've found, just as uh, Indrani was mentioning, just looking at all the different things, that it is all always centered around love and heart and the core all of the sessions uh, sort of uh, bring up gratitude and compassion and empathy and that's so needed at this point and uh, it's something that you know however you get to it we need humanity to to actually rise up and say well this is an area that we haven't really explored you know in all these different forms you know, peace education is person, my personal favorite because I've studied that for 40 years. But, you know, in any respect, I've noticed you, you'd you mentioned in the, before that it's about um, going straight to the heart, whereas other other meditations are different and whatever. It's, others mention about an onion and raising, removing the layers. And, you know, it's all, but it's still about the core. It's about getting to the core and being human. And that's so, so good to hear as well. So thank you. Thank you very much for that insight. Thank and, you. And uh, we wish you all the luck. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, I'm going to definitely book, book myself a seat, yeah? <laughs> Coming to Blabi, to your centre. Hazrat, jo aaj ka mahal hai, us pe maine kuch likhne ki koshish kari hai, to aapke saamne mein chand laine hai. पेश करना चाहता हूँ तो वैसे है कि वो चमन ना रहा 
वो हवा ना रहे वो चमन ना रहा वो हवा ना रहे वो इंसान ना रहा वो इंसानियत ना रही वो इंसान ना रहा वो इंसानियत ना रही जिंदगी का आज कोई मोल ना रहा वो गुलों में ताज़ा खुशबू ना रही जिंदगी का आज कोई मोल ना रहा वो गुलों में ताज़ा खुशबू ना रही वो इंतज़ार ना रहा वो कसक ना रही वो इंतज़ार ना रहा वो कसक ना रही वो मौसम ना रहा वो बाहर ना रही वो आईना ना रहा वो शबाहत ना रही वो आईना ना रहा वो शबाहत ना रही वो मैखाना ना रहा वो मैखाना ना रहा वो तशनगी ना रही कुछ जहर सा फैला है फिजाओं में आज कुछ जहर सा फैला है फिजाओं में आज इंसान को जीने की राहत ना रही During the COVID lockdown, many volunteers have worked together tirelessly not only in Leicester but everywhere, demonstrating our shared humanity, kindness and compassion in time of hardship. In Leicester, the Peace Centre, Aadhaar and South Asian Health Action are good examples of community work helping vulnerable individuals and families who are either in need of basic items isolated or just wanting to keep well and mentally fit good afternoon and welcome to the peace center my name is mohammed lakat and we run a project here called the free peace center food bank which has started some 6 and a half years ago in november of 2013 uh, what we've been doing is handing out food parcels and helping those people within our area with food due to food poverty food parcels go out from the peace center food bank every single week and have done so since november of 2013 to some 40 to 60 people families and individuals up to about 125 people are benefiting from them however since monday 16th of march with the support of lester general public churches synagogues gurdwaras other organizations both religious and non religious we have found that we have been very very fortunate to be able to support many more people in lester and lester certain lester shop we have had approximately 100 food parcels uh, more than 100 food parcels going out to people more than what we have normally been giving out and this has been happening all thanks to our dedicated volunteers who are sometimes doing 20 and 30 hours a week completely for the sake of manav utsav and that's for humanity and we at the peace center without looking at anyone's religion without looking at anyone's background or race or religion or creed happily will help anyone that is in need and would like some help with food we have found that since monday 16th of march since the emergency covid-19 appeal was launched we have helped thousands and thousands of people help put food in their belly and that's happened because of people like yourself who have generously donated at their time their wealth and their food so that other people don't have to go to sleep hungry many children many young people have benefited as well as many people who are in their 80s and 90s who couldn't get out of their homes just to go and buy their basic essentials the peace center food bank has been fortunate enough to be able to reach out to these people in their difficulties in their times of need i'm going to take you through a little walk through our peace center and just show you a little bit about the kind of items that we give and what sort of food parcels that we have and why it's important for you anyone that is watching this video to make sure that you get involved in something like this in your own community to help your neighbors we are taught as muslims 
that you are not a true believer until you are worried about the well-being of your neighbors. How can it be that your neighbor goes hungry while you are on a full stomach? And these times have brought us all together. It's brought out humanity and it's brought us to the realization that we have to be there for one another. So much of wealth a person can have, but you cannot even go to the shops in many places. You are not allowed to do so many things. There has been this extended lockdown in Leicester. And today we find that we are not allowed to travel outside of Leicester. So here we have... Uh, you can see around me, surrounding me, there's lots and lots of food items that have been donated by generous people like yourselves that have been supporting the Peace Centre Food Bank in its aims and ambitions to fulfil the rights of our neighbours and our community. Now we have, these are the parcels that go up, over a hundred of these parcels. There's a family parcel and there's a singles parcel. These items together with a variety of sweets, chocolates, drinks, frozen items uh, like chicken and meat, uh, also refrigerated items and fruit and veg, whatever is available to us, we give out these, more than a hundred of these every single week, thanks to your support. Keep up the good work in your community. Manap Ustav, Munagutsav is something that is very, very important, humanity, Everyone is a human being before anything else. We are all one race, and that's a human race. And I hope you are going to be inspired to do more and more good for your community and for the betterment of the whole of mankind. Thank you very much, Mohammed and the Peace Centre Food Bank in Thurnley Lodge, Leicester. Thank you. Hello. Hi, this is Sudarshan I'm going to present actually a ghazal which has sung by Shobha Gurkuji, uh, written by Sudarshan Fakirji and uh, music by Taj Ahmed Khan. So, please bless me. Ah, uh -huh. 
Hello, thank you to Mano Utsa for letting me say a few words to celebrate South Asian Heritage Month. My name is Kirit Mystery, I'm the chair and founder of South Asian Health Action. The charity is aiming to engage, educate and empower the South Asian communities on issues to do with diabetes, kidney disease, organ, blood and stem cell donation. Some of the programs that we've developed to raise awareness is the organ donation campaigns targeted at the Hindu, Sikh and the Muslim community. We also have developed a Living Kidney Hindu awareness program and a video to raise awareness of more living kidney donations from the South Asian communities. I'd like to thank the um, also the Celebrating Our Similarities organization in Leicester for also working with South Asian Health Action, but also um, I also am the service manager for the ADAR Mental Health Charity. The charity is a specialist charity that targets um, the black, Asian and minority ethnic communities of Leicester to raise awareness of mental health issues. ADAR has been around since 1989 providing valuable culturally sensitive services to the South Asian and black and ethnic minority communities in Leicester and Leicestershire. Throughout the uh, current uh, challenges we're having and the pandemic, we have tried to provide valuable uh, information, counselling and support to our communities. Uh, we've done mindfulness uh, courses online, we've done yoga, meditation and breathing exercises on Zoom but also we've provided valuable telephone support and counselling and emotional support because at this crucial time 
a lot of the communities are suffering in silence. Um, we are now launching a, a project that's going to be addressing uh, domestic abuse targeted at the communities. We also want to raise more awareness of domestic abuse within the communities as well of Leicestershire, particularly the uh, black, Asian and minority ethnic communities, as people from our, those communities are actually um, victims of domestic abuse, sexual abuse, sexual violence, emotional abuse and financial abuse. So by getting our communities to talk more about domestic abuse, raise awareness and also let the communities know that ADAR project are there to help by providing valuable culturally, linguistically, counselling support services for the communities. Although we want to celebrate the South Asian Heritage Month, we also need to be talking about issues like mental health, also organ donation, which are very much taboo subjects, um, and domestic abuse, as I've already mentioned. These issues are taboo. Our communities uh, don't talk about them. So we need to start um, with this month to actually start talking about these issues and getting more awareness, conversations, and please, our appeal is to ensure that if you know someone who is suffering with mental health, with domestic abuse, also suffering with diabetes and kidney disease and other organ-related matters, please contact South Asian Health Action or the Adal Project. We are here to help and we really want to work with you and during this month we will raise more awareness. Uh, thank you very much and look forward to uh, working with everyone in the Leicestershire, Leicester and worldwide because these issues are not just here for Leicester, they, all of our communities, uh, South Asian communities are suffering worldwide. Thank you very much and hope this month goes well. Thank you very much. Bye. I'm 
During July, the Manavutsav festival has covered many topics and recognized the need for communities to open up about general health issues, mental health, stress, both domestic and work related. Previous discussions are available to view on YouTube. Today, we present some statistics and examples of support that is available especially during these difficult times and we will be available after when we enter the recovery stage. Hello everyone, my name is Nora Chaudhry. I'm a psychologist and doctoral researcher looking at domestic violence and abuse. I've been asked to say a few words about this subject um, for the Manav Utsa Festival. Um, so we know that since lockdown, um, the figures in terms of people, the number of people who have been killed as a result of domestic violence and abuse is actually three times higher than the normal figures. And we know that in the year ending March 2019, an estimated 2.4 million adults have, have been suffering from this. So it is a really significant issue that we do need to do something about. Um, the first thing to be aware of when we're looking looking at recognise that it's not just limited to the individual couple, anyone within this diagram could actually be someone who's either suffering from abuse or who is um, carrying out abusive behaviours. Just to give you a few examples of some types of abusive behaviours, you can have the games, taking financial contracts without permission, harsh abusive derogatory words, physical violence including pushing and shoving, um, to knowledge, um, other things like monitoring and spying or watching the other person. In terms of the effects of abuse, so the effects are really um, significant. They, they stem from the individual level to the family society at large. So when you have one person that goes through domestic violence and abuse, um, it does have a ripple, ripple effect all the way through society. And the other consideration within this to have is the fact that children are very often the hidden victims. They are suffering in silence. Um, even if they don't see what goes on in the household, they will hear about it. They will know the atmosphere. They will know that there are certain rules that they have to abide by. And this does have a long term lasting impact on them. So some of the positive lessons we can take forward from COVID-19 are the fact that we can all unite. We can all collectively look out for each other. We do want to help each other and we can overcome challenges and difficulties. And also the fact that we've realised that life is very fragile and if we want to create change, then the time is now. So how do we go about creating change in this area? So firstly, in terms of helping victims and survivors. And do support them they want your support, to listen to them, to honour any trust that's placed in you and to offer to sign post professional help. Things to avoid when helping victims and survivors is not to judge them. Um, not to apply pressure to take your advice or assume that you know what the best course of action is and certainly not to make decisions on their behalf. In terms of supporting those who want to change their abusive behaviour, we can do this, we can help within this process, we can listen to them. It doesn't mean we have to agree with abusive behaviours. We can help to create family and peer support groups for these issues coming, taking an unequivocal, unexpected stance of derogatory attitudes and abusive behaviours uh, but then we look at, well, what are the health, healthy alternatives and how can we support pers that person towards those healthy alternatives? And also in terms of helping children, we can check on their welfare, we can talk to them, we can help to reduce their isolation by keeping them engaged in healthy activities. And a really important point is to allow them to witness alternative healthy relationships so that as they grow up, they know that there are alternative ways of behaving. In terms of supports, these are some of the national support available. So there's various helplines and there's also a mobile app that people can download. Locally within Leicester and Leicestershire, there are some really good organisations. There's UA, there's the Quetzal Project, who have recently just started a specific project for those from the South Asian community. And there's also Juniper Lodge. And finally, there's, uh, there's a book that I've written, which may be of use to some people. So I hope this will help us to make to realise 
that there are things that we can do to positively support one another and create change in this area. Thank you. कभी कभी मेरे दिल में खयाल आता है कभी कभी मेरे दिल में खयाल आता है के जैसे तुझको बनाया गया है मेरे लिए के जैसे तुझको बनाया गया है मेरे लिए तू अब से पहले सितारों में बस रही थी कहीं तू अब से पहले सितारों में बस रही थी कहीं तुझे समी पे बुलाया गया है मेरे लिए तुझे जमी पे बुलाया गया है मेरे लिए कभी कभी मेरे दिल में खयाल So we 
we have Fazila Bana and Gabrielle Porter here today. Welcome, both of you. Thank you, Kamla. It's nice to um, be part of this. Thank you for having us. Um, so I'll, I'll just explain to the viewers, um, you're both recent graduates from uh, Leicester University and you founders of a new organization called Connect With Law. So Fazila, could you give me an idea of, how, well, how did you meet Gabrielle and uh, tell me a bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm Fazila. I met Gabrielle at the University of Leicester. We both studied law together there. Um, we also were part of the pro bono society there working on the street law project. Gabrielle was the director and I was a team leader in the second year. In the first year, she was team leader and presenter. It's there that we discovered that we have a real passion for um, community work and especially things to do with your legal rights and informing the community of their legal rights. Mm -hmm. That's great. So, so how did you set up Connect with Law then? So as, as we worked on um, street law, we realised it was something that we wanted to end with our degree. We wanted to continue the work. So um, because COVID-19 happened, our assessments were home-based and in that time we were very productive and we used the extra time around um, assessments to build our own organisation. So we're develop developing it at the moment. We put ideas together and we're really happy that we can continue our passion um, past our university degree whilst we are doing our training to become solicitors. So we're going to do um, our LPC in September. Uh, we're currently working with web designers and accountants and completing all the bureaucratic aspects. So once we are able to and regulations allow, we can carry on with our work. That's wonderful, thank you. So what is, what is the aim of your organisation then? Yeah, so uh, yeah, the aim of um, Connect With Law is quite simple. So the passion that we discovered that we have to provide legal education to all demographics will now be continued through our organisation. So we are able to increase the public understanding of the law. So we don't provide legal advice, we provide interactive and stimulating legal sessions to a wide range of organisations. So this ranges from employer and employee workshops on the Equality Act, on accommodating for dyslexic employees, about how the system of governments, governance works in the UK to local school children, but also the most important aspect that we're really keen to develop is female empowerment. That's wonderful. So moving on to Gabrielle then. So your passion is in empowering women. So what kind of services will you provide? Well, we've noticed a gap in the market actually currently because we've found on research that a lot of the organisations surrounding domestic abuse uh, sort of identifying the abuse and breaking the cycle. But there's not really any sessions which look towards the future. So we want to share our legal knowledge, so such as property rights in land law, um, employment law, family law, which is all sort of interlinked to create a fantastic and stimulating legal based session to show women that there is life after abuse and there is future after abuse and the abuse doesn't define them. So it's looking at them more as a survivor and an empowered woman going forward, as opposed to a victim. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a wonderful uh, sort of service. You know, perhaps um, there is a gap in the market there, I think, in terms of providing a, a support service of that sort. So, you know, in the legal terms. So th thank you for that. So how can uh, organisations benefit from your services then? Well, the law touches us everywhere and it affects every aspect of our everyday life, whether we're aware of it or whether we're not. And I've been working as a healthcare assistant now for the past three years during my studies. I work with the NHS and I specialise in mental health. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I deal with people that are high-risk suicide, manic depressant, paranoid schizophrenic, and what I found, and I've discussed this with Fazila, and there's been a lot of interest among staff and patients as well within the organisations I've worked as a healthcare for, that people aren't really aware of the sexual process and how it sort of affects them. So we want to reach out to organisations. We want organisations to contact us, go into mental health units, get involved with potentially the crisis team and collaborate with organisations such as that to provide stimulating sessions for people. So explaining the appeals process, the tribunal process, getting people to understand that because they've gone in voluntarily doesn't necessarily mean they can leave voluntarily. 
because what sort of aggravates people's anxieties tends to be the fact that they don't know how it works and there's still a lot of stigma around mental health disabilities and how you get released so we really want to sort of branch out into all demographics mm. of the community and we've also found uh, the importance of promoting diversity in the workplace as well so we really want organizations to reach out to us so we can go in and talk about what are protected characteristics what do you do if you feel like you've been discriminated against so that we can really make people more aware of the issues you know surrounding different cultural needs and race because sometimes i think what we've all found probably in our work experience and work life is that sometimes comments might get made or people might be misunderstood just because there's not that facility of education surrounding uh, people of minorities and different cultures well, we, we did have a discussion uh, in one of the Manawutsu events um, talking to Professor Raghu Raghavan from Leicester University. Uh, well, uh, he was previously, I believe. Uh, he's at De Montfort now. Um, and he, we were saying that um, it is a, a subject that's not discussed within the South Asian communities as much. And perhaps it does need to be brought out. So when people are aware of your services, perhaps that might help that situation. So thank you very much for your insight and your uh, explanation about your organization. Um, so I'll, um, sorry, excuse me. Yes, we did have this discussion uh, in one of the previous events where we were saying that um, South Asian communities do um, are reluctant to discuss subjects around mental health and that how we can bring it out. But your organization seems like to be in the right place to actually bring that out as, as a community issue, you know. So thank you very much for, um, you know, sharing your ideas and, and explaining to us what you intend to do. And I wish you all the very best. Um, I think you'll be going places. I hope so. Too. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. The final submission is by an amazing molecular endocrinologist passion in looking at sustainability within the context of the wider climate change issues we face. This area of work is at an early stage for COS and we look forward to developing this with your help. Here, Srijit Chakraborty looks at life underwater and how we need to sustain our food resources. Hi. Hello, hi, Srijit. A very warm welcome hi. to Mana and um, thank, you thank you for giving your time. I know this is more kind of a dinner time for you, but I, oh, yeah. you know, brought you in. But apologies for uh -huh. that. But you have been do doing some fantastic work, and and really, I would like to tell to our audience something like that happened. You know, and this is how possibly connections happen. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was actually browsing through the, you know, I, I, I kind of follow the music on social media and I kind of try to listen to it. And especially during okay. the night time, you know, to calm my mind down. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. came across your posting and I thought, well, I could link it very well to the work that I'm doing. So I'm kind of working mm -hmm. in, in mostly in digital media and society and linking it to mental health. And yep. I thought, you know, some of the videos that you have been doing and the songs that you have done actually with those, I think mm -hmm. be connected to very much of like cognitive behavioral therapies that we talked about. And, you know, you took me through that journey. And I mm -hmm. thought that, you know, it can't be anything, uh, you know, it can't be something that we can restrict. We need to invite you and come to our event and talk about Thank it. you so much. Can you take me through? Because I know that I'm quite conscious that you're a molecular biologist, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm specifically a molecular endocrinologist. I deal wow. with steroids. Okay. I deal with okay. steroids and my test organism is fish. And it's a very endangered fish nowadays, uh, which yeah. was a Bengali delicacy. Magur Mach, as we say it. Yeah. So nowadays we don't find that in markets. No. So what is happening is that the, uh, the population is declining because there is a reproduction hindrance due yeah. to the wanton use of pesticides. Yeah. So I am working on the steroid pathway so that I can overcome this uh, lacuna. Uh, mm. I, can, I can just make them breed naturally in their environment. 
So that's wow. specifically my work. My work. And it links links to sustainable development. You see. Definitely, it it does, it does, like it does. Because uh, this is these kind of fishes, they do take a very less uh, space, and uh, we uh, we know that Indian farmers they do have a very less space to, of their own uh, for their own sustenance, and you can do it in your backyard. So nowadays, the concept of uh, organic farming is also on the boom. So as very well we can uh, integrate this uh, fishes with that because they do they need very very less maintenance and they are very nutritious to health. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic work. Fantastic work. How all do you the, kind of... all the nutritionists on this globe they are working on this uh, big question that how to feed the nine billion the uh, world population is expected to reach nine billion by twenty fifty. So that is a big question, big question mark. That how will we feed the population specifically with a nutritionally balanced diet yes. by 2050? So uh, I might mention here that uh, India has ranked second as the fish producing country in the whole world after China, yes. and this is the one of the fastest moving food sector. It has surpassed. the production if you compare the productions it has surpassed beef it has per, 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 surpassed even uh, the coffee beans etc production wise it is a very very fast growing sector that's right. it oh wow uh, yeah. fantastic yeah that's very informative and i think you know i mean life below water you know as i would link it to my daughter you know and she kind of you know, keeps on talking oh, yeah. about you know reducing plastic because that's a push here in oh, the schools yeah. oh yeah so oh yeah so we need to reduce plastic because that's creating tensions yeah. like under sea isn't it under the ocean and, and the problem yeah, is absolutely. with the with the life there fantastic yes, uh, how how about you you know how are you managing how did you manage in the last couple of months or even now in the pandemic time with your research and how did it go on the journey as a phd researcher as many uh, would relate to it's a very it's a very lonesome journey because uh, all of a sudden you are left with your research and your data and uh, there is nobody to help you and you are getting rejections everywhere there is nobody to understand the pain there is nobody un- to understand the kind of frustration you're facing so uh, my refuge was definitely music i resorted to music first i uh, i used to uh, resort to those therapies like uh, i didn't uh, i was i was suffering from a bit of insomnia due to depression chronic depression and all so i resorted to this healing me- like musics say the we say the delta waves we say those uh, that tibetan uh, that healing sounds of those yeah. drums and those flowing water yeah. so what i found is a very strange correlation between in classical music and these forms of music which are supposedly marketed as a meditation music or healing music mm. because indian classical music has its roots from nature because yeah. indian classical music all the ragas it is said that it, is, it has originated from each and every se- season of the nature or it is each and every temperament of the nature so they depict a kind of snapshot of the nature as such mm-hmm. so uh, i i took it like a experimentative sort of thing because uh, i feel that it is my humble submission to the society as a musician that i must have a social responsibility of if any any a single person is having a bit of peace of mind by listening to my music my job is done so that is my two cents towards the society in this in this uh, times of uh, distress corona pandemic everything yeah yeah so are you making the videos on your own or Are yeah, you, I do. I I oh. do make it uh, out of the scratch. I make it everything on my own. Yeah, yeah. So it all comes through very well, and I think you Thank know you that's so how um, celebrate our similarities. Okay. They are doing Thank this program. On- Actually, what I found find very interesting is that that we had an identity of profession which has been stripped out of us. Everybody, a lawyer is sitting at the home. A doctor is sitting at the home. Uh, um say medical practitioner or say a lab rat or whatever he is mm. sitting at the home so yeah. everybody is facing this uh, kind of uh, depression because because we have we don't have this identity anymore that i am a lawyer i don't go to court i am working on internet all the time i'm hooked up on internet and as they say that uh, more you see this uh, screens 
more your melatonin levels go for a toss mm. so more your sleep cycles do like they differ in the times of this pandemic so uh, in this times uh, i'm really thankful to this manav utsav and uh, they want for university lecester for organizing such a beautiful like very thoughtful need of the hour event which is i guess uh, yeah. like uh, everybody will be like they will they will relate to it very much very well that's it yeah i think it's the human connections that we were looking for absolutely we looking for absolutely looking absolutely you know absolutely absolutely it was one we are nothing really you know true. and we need to work to produce things and true. um this virus time true. has taught us that so yes but yeah. thank you very much for your time really today thank har mulaqat pe mehsoos yehi hota hai har mulaqat pe mehsoos yehi hota hai mujhse kuch teri nazar पूछ रही हो जैसे मुझसे कुछ तेरी नजर पूछ रही हो जैसे कोई फरियाद तेरे में दबी हो जैसे एक लम्हे सिमट आया सदियों का सफर एक लम्हे सिमट आया सदियों का सफर जिंदगी तेज बहुत तेज चली हो जैसे जिंदगी तेज बहुत तेज चली हो जैसे तेरे दबी हो जैसे आई विल नाउ हैंड यू ओवर टू डॉक्टर इन द रानी लहिरी इन द स्टूडियो हु विल फील एनी क्वेश्चन राइज इट लीज मी to say thank you very much for joining me my name is indrajit madan my contact details are in the chat and you can contact me about reading and writing shairis and any other poetry you wish to do so thank you thank you very much indrajit for the wonderful narration and um thank you very much to all of our audiences who have been with us for the whole month of july and hope we all stay together stay well and work together for a better society and this manav utsav has been a very wonderful celebration of our humanity and it will stay with us forever thank you very much <laughs>